right, so this whole deal is going to be a little training day in the life after I get right out of work. I'm getting in my car, freshly after shitting, and we're going to head to Pavit. It's about a five minute drive. Um, going into this, I was supposed to do 265 for a 3 by 10 and like gradually go into 275 for a 3 by 10 territory. And I think had I stuck to that a bit more, it would have turned out that way. But I, it's just been so long between organ failure and muscle strains. Like I wanted, I really wanted something. So I went and did 275 a little bit early and it's still technically a PR. We did it for two sets of 10, which, you know, our single 10 rep PR is 275. So the fact that we did it for volume is proof that we're stronger. I was just hoping that we're a little bit stronger at this point, but we still can grow from it. So right now we're pulling up to Pavit and we're gonna get this training started. It wasn't too cold today, so didn't really have to heat up my hands much for the bar. So the Neuralink wouldn't absolutely tear up my hands. So we're coming in here to the freeway area and I'm gonna start warming up right here. Get my equipment on, cause I don't really transition from bare elbow to sleeves. I just do one or the other, pretty much, depending on what training is calling for, what my program is, whether it's all bare elbow, whether it's all sleeved. So, you know, at this point, that this deep in the mesocycle, we're doing sleeved, high intensity sets of 10, like kind of approaching RER zero for our volume. So yeah, we're throwing on the SPD sleeves for the first time in, a couple months actually before this I've been doing a lot of bare elbow stuff so right after I get these on we're gonna start with 135 usually take this for just a set of three four if things are feeling a little off I might take it for five but you know with the new sleeves this stuff is kind of flying you know, we'll put on another plate for the warm-up take it for a quick three kind of short changed rep one which I didn't like so I tried to exaggerate the other two now we're gonna move to our work weight 275 10 rep PR we're feeling it out for the first set so try and get that full range get our full 10 and how it felt it felt easier than the video looked that's how it that's the best way to describe set one whenever doing this I legitimately thought like Three by ten was, you know, in the cards. I thought it was possible, just not possible for like a second session in a training week. And then what happened next kind of sealed the deal, which was set number two, which started well. It felt, it felt normal, and it just got really hard, really quick, like at around like rep six or seven. And I'm like, oh man. I'm gonna have to fight for this set, and then you know my wrist wrap explodes, which doesn't help. You know, it doesn't help that I stole them, you know, from a lost and found about five years ago. But they still hold together pretty all right. But you know, here's rep ten. We mauled it up, but we still get that two by ten PR, and we take the walk of shame because we're we're weak at overhead pressing and get the PR we want. So that concludes the overhead work because normally. It would be a three by 10, but since we're doing it so heavy, it's, uh, we're just specifying to the compound. We're not really doing any more accessories, but that first little video, that's 50 pounds, and we're moving to our first work set of 57 and a half. From last week, it did feel easy, and it's felt even easier here, so I decided to up it to a new, which volume PR, technically, which is 61 and some change as far as pure weight because you know two pulleys but we're we take that for a two by ten after we do the uh 57 and a half after that we're doing a little bit of containment with a mazarenko handle with 57 and a half pounds for three sets of ten 
Um, just working basic containment here because in the period of time that I was gone, sort of, trying to recover my strength between organ failure and muscle strains, I got an arm wrestling. It's pretty fun. And my weakest link really is my hand. So I'm trying to really make it to where people can't expose my wrist and fingers. After we do our hand and forearm work, we move to our hammers, which is pretty quintessential. In arm wrestling is hammer curl strength, or more so back pressure. Right now I'm not really working a back pressure-esque movement, so I'm just getting sort of the back pressure I work from doing basic hammer curls. And then I'm essentially separating pronated back pressure on the table into hammer curls and dynamic pronation curls. So, you know, I do both of those separately for three sets of 10, respectively, with hammer curls, I'm doing 85 pounds, and uh, pronation curls. Last week, we hit a PR of 65 pounds for a set of 10, but we couldn't do it with the volume, not even close. So I decided to just barely add on to the volume weight we were already doing, which was 57 and a half, and I bumped it to like, 59 in pure cable tension on the fucking uh, pulley it's like 115 plus one of the little like weights you know but here we got our last set of hammers they're feeling pretty all right one goal that i got is i want a hammer curl of the hundreds for a set of 10 and i'm doing them for sets of 10 right now I think uh, in the near future, I think it'll be possible, and I think it'll really help me on the table, regardless of being coordinated on the table or not. Right after we finish these hammer curls, we get a cheeky little flex in, pretend I'm not fat and 320 pounds for a second. And after that, we move to our pronation curls. Kind of scuff the camera angle on this, specific set but you know you can still see the work being done so it's all right I fix it in the next in the next two sets but yeah. this is another weak point that I got is that I noticed whenever I was practicing with Danny Gillian sort of arm wrestling with Mike and his friends is that not only am I not coordinated enough, but pronation is something I never used throughout my you know 13 years of weightlifting experience. It's just not something that's developed in you know bench, squat, deadlift, overhead press, any sort of traditional compound barbell movement. So that's something that really lacks in my arm wrestling arsenal. But that pretty much concludes our pavet work we still got one more thing once we get home which is uh gripper work because i also have a i'm decently close at least as far as my last attempt of closing a camp to uh, captains of crush number three mine specifically i'm not sure uh, on the rgc of it but i've gotten super close in the in the last month so right now i'm working credit card sets of uh, five with uh, number two, because that seems to be a decent intensity right now. I was working the Ivanko Super Gripper, but I think it's the, the less spread, it's not doing me much good. So I think working the full range with credit card sets is doing me better in training. The first two sets here were pretty funky in that the closes were just like kind of meh. Especially towards the end, like, they were just barely not closed, which I wasn't really happy with. Doing that 275 for a 2x10 must have just tanked my CNS. And that probably just carried over into grippers, to be honest. Because I was just kind of failing to close these credit card set reps for a couple of reps. So as a result of that happening in the last two sets... Like I was just barely getting it close. So I'm like, you know what, on th set three, we're gonna do just, you know, a deep set, set of eight. Nothing too hard, but nothing too easy. And we just get eight quick ones right there. And just like that, we're a little bit closer to a 
COC number three, and there you go. You get the little pick of uh, me closing it. After that, uh, we take a shower and then make dinner. 12 eggs, scrambled, no seasoning because, you know, that's just kind of the way I grew up making them. But, uh, you know, scramble them, just throw them on the pan, eat them. And I usually have these little, like, uh, Fred Meyer brand jumbo fish sticks along with them because I'm usually still hungry. So what I gathered from this training session, like, we're strong. It feels good to be uh, the strongest I've ever been overhead, you know, simply because, you know, almost a year ago I was in the hospital with a failing organ. And then after I was out of the hospital, uh, I had to deal with, you know, a muscle strain just sort of out of the, straight out of the bat for no se seemingly no reason. I'm not as strong as I'd like to be, but I think um, I can still work from this. You know, it's not necessarily over just because I sort of molded a set of 10 early on. I can still flip a strength block, turn it into peaking, and bring a one rep max out of this that's higher than my old max of 365. And along the way, if I'd like, I can beat my 275, 10 rep PR, and maybe get like 285, 295 maybe. But it was, it was overall a good Valentine's Day.